Good evening, everyone. And uh, I would be presenting in next 10, 12 minutes the response that has come in India on the guidelines or standards for indoor environment quality during COVID and post COVID. I'm Jyotir May Mathur. I am vice chair of the Ishre Indoor Environment Equality Standard. And professionally, I am a professor at uh, NIT Jaipur. So, what we did was, uh, as uh, Bill and Yarek has have mentioned, that uh, ASHRAE uh, developed a document and Riva also developed a document. So, we studied quickly those documents and then we very soon came up with a position paper on use of associated technologies that we were finding in these documents and otherwise. So, we prepared a position paper, but we very soon set up a task force for developing guidelines for HVAC industry because it was felt that uh, there were a lot of apprehensions against the HVAC industry and HVAC systems were considered to be the main culprits for spread of COVID in buildings. So what we did was in the guideline, we uh, had three sections. We had, first of all, description about what happens to the COVID virus because of various environmental conditions. Uh, then we had the main section, which was covering various applications of HVAC, for example, residential, industrial, commercial, and so on and so forth. And then there was a third section, which was related to operation and maintenance, so as to prevent the spread of COVID. So, as I said, in our uh, uh, guidelines, we had a description of indoor environmental quality, then we had a special section also on portable air cleaners because we found that uh, there were a lot of portable air cleaners that hit the market and uh, there was a lot of standard products as well as not so good products. So we had a special coverage of uh, how to evaluate the quality of portable air cleaners in that are available around. What our main emphasis was in the COVID guideline document was three things. One is the temperature which we recommended that definitely in excess of 24 you should be using. And we were encouraging them to use as high temperature as possible because the literature was nearly unanimously saying that the life of virus decreases with time. Uh, relative humidity was also one of our uh, areas of emphasis in the guideline document, and we were recommending the range of 40 to 70. Higher humidity was not good for the go uh, growth of mold and other things, but lower humidity was considered to be responsible for deeper penetration of uh, uh, COVID virus in lungs and so on and so forth. So we suggested them to keep the humidity level in this optimal range. And then another thing was that we started giving more and more emphasis on air movement, because if you have air movement, you can still stand a higher air temperature. And that was our third area of emphasis broadly. So we had the different types of systems being used in different settings. In residential, we have quite uh, commonly uh, seen air conditioners, window air conditioners and split air conditioners, which do not have much of fresh air. And therefore, in this document, we stressed the need of fresh air so that the exhaust air can be uh, sent out, which may have a contaminant. So that was one area where we uh, emphasized. The other thing is that in residential, we find a lot of evaporative cooling systems, direct evaporative cooling systems being used in India. That had two problems. One, because of high pollution level outside, it may be dust, it may be because of other particulate matter, which are there, vehicular pollution or whatever. Uh, these evaporative coolers actually pump in directly the dust or other particulate matter, which become a vehicle for the COVID virus. And therefore, that was to be stopped. So we, through this guideline, we emphasize the necessity of use of air filtration, which was absent before this guide document. So industry also responded uh, quite positively, and they started using uh, dust filters in evaporative cooling. So these are the some of uh, the kind of small transformatory changes that our guideline uh, brought. In commercial facilities, we started uh, uh, highlighting the importance of uh, outdoor air, which is called fresh air also, and we started Initially, for commercial facilities, 5 CFM per, per person, as the classical number is, and we definitely inside uh, uh, stressed upon maximizing the supply of outdoor air beyond 5 CFM also. More important was that there was a lot of uh, queries, a lot of queries were there for use of heat recovery wheels. And because literature was also coming up with the threat of spreading of cross-contamination, 
therefore in this guideline we said that it is better not to use a heat recovery wheel still people were coming with the query and asking for a strong basis but we said till the literature very clearly says that it is okay to use heat recovery wheels it is better to avoid use of heat recovery wheels and in addition what we also did on we uh, stressed and we highlighted need of higher filtration air filtration so HEPA filter is what we recommended or if they have a better filtration than H13 we were welcoming that in addition to these what we were also saying was that in air handling units you start using UVGI for uh, disinfection and uh, wherever you have the possibility of collection of water, you also uh, use UVGI for <clears throat> that disinfection. Coming to the other uh, facilities, in industrial facilities, we recommended a higher air change, 10 to 15 air changes as compared to uh, the lower heat, air change in commercial buildings. So, because industrial applications, they have the possibility of higher air change. So, therefore, we asked them why not to go for that. So, we suggested that it is better if the exhaust air is 70 to 80 percent of the air supply so that you can easily take the uh, fresh air. So, if the exhaust air was not properly ducted or properly uh, fitted with a separate exhaust air system or exhaust fan, we suggested that you better install another fan so that you can have an easy exhale out of the stale air which may have contaminants and therefore people responded to that and made a lot of uh, retrofitting. In industrial facilities also, we uh, pushed the use of uh, UVGI or ionization uh, for having uh, disinfection, especially in water, uh, because water droplets carrying the contaminant were becoming carrier and they were also enhancing the spread. In the recirculation system, we actually discouraged the recirculation system and we said that if you have a recirculation system, you better convert it to once through system. And uh, so, but industry also uses evaporative cooler. So, the same recommendations which were made to residential facility. So, a use of uh, air filter to prevent the entry of dust, first of all, and b minimize the droplet carryover from the evaporative cooler because in many not so properly designed evaporative coolers the droplet carryover was also quite high. Uh, we also had guidelines for converting the rooms to patient rooms in, during the COVID times. So we again said that okay it is better if each patient has is catered by a separate uh, AHU and uh, therefore you have and not only that you better treat your exhaust air before it goes out of the room. So there were many methods that were suggested for exhaust air treatment right from uh, the UVGI or whatever. But the worst thing, uh, if they don't have anything, we simply suggested that you can even think of heating the exhaust air and so uh, by heating because the life of virus, if it is there in that air, goes down and the possibility of you leaving virus in the air also goes down. So therefore, we says, suggested all these things to medical facilities. Up to 12 air changes, again, higher is the air change. We were uh, believing on the principle that with air changes, you get dilution of the virus, which is thrown by the patient in the air, and therefore we were promoting this. What uh, overall in this, you can... Uh, feel that we were pushing two, three things. One is definitely uh, HEPA filtration or S3, S13 filtration, uh, exhaust air treatment. So these were the things, these were the common things. And also what we uh, suggested them that if you are having a neighboring building and your building is not isolated, uh, better to leave the exhaust air at least three meters above the tallest point of the building so that it is going into the air and it is not giving going into the living space. So this was there. One important thing that had happened during the COVID time was that Government of India has this organization, Bureau of Indian Standards, uh, which is a statutory body in India for making standards. They approached Ishre that lot of not so nice filters are being sold in the market and they don't have any clue of about their efficacy or efficiency. Uh, the reason was quite simple that that time there was no testing facility, the accredited testing facility for filtration in India. So what we did was we set up a task force for uh, uh, a fractional testing, efficiency testing of filters. The reason we found that the 12 channel sampler based testing facility, which is required as per ISO standard, was quite costly. So we, for the short time, tried and developed an alternate method of five channel sampler and through a statistical method by getting the filters tested in both the settings, we developed an equation and through that equation, we developed an alternate compliance path or national difference, you can say in ISO terms for India for a short period. So 
for I, if I remember correctly, the duration for which this alternate method was applicable was three years. And after that, they will be coming back to the regular 12 channel sampler, which is international. Sampler. So this is a local adaptation that we did just for the pressing need of having an air filtration testing in India during the COVID time. Three new developments coming to the towards the end of my presentation. Three new developments also happened in addition to the filter testing. One is we had the Ishre IEQ standard right from 2016. 2019, we came up with a second version, but after the experience of COVID, we modified the standard and that is going to be released after two days from now uh, on 15th of uh, uh, February at ACREX in India. So a new standard has been added for ventilation and many of the things that uh, uh, Yarek and Bill mentioned in calculation of ventilation effectiveness and all, we have added so that people can really make use of that information while implementing this standard. And another is we have a special mention about what is to be done during the pandemic or epidemic. Uh, if it happens, unfortunately, uh, what is to be done with respect to the ventilation? These two things have been added. We have another code in India, which is responsible primarily for energy efficiency. We used to call it ECBC, Energy Conservation Building Code. The next version of that is being developed or it is almost developed. It is called ECSBC, Energy Conservation Sustainable Building Code. So fortunately, the same team which was involved in Ishri IQ standard was also involved for a significant portion of this code. And therefore, we have added a new chapter in the energy efficiency code, which is indoor environmental quality. It is largely based upon the Ishri IQ standard and therefore the section on ventilation and emphasis on source control is what we have suggested in this. So the source control, which is kind of engineering source control, and therefore uh, we have that as coming as a new thing in energy conservation code. A special mention about what is to be done during epidemic, as we have mentioned in the IQ standard, that is also there. So these two documents are complete. One is going to be released after two days. The second one is already there in public, out in public review. That will also be released in a few months from now, hopefully. The third thing, which is we have the master document that is called National Building Code. So we have the development of this code every 10 years and 2016 version is already under development. And again, fortunately, the same team, uh, many members of the same team are there in this development. So we are taking care that all the lessons that we have learned in COVID, which are mentioned in COVID guidelines, either by Ashray or Ashray or Reva or any other country, we try to take a gist out of that. And we mention all of these suggestions in the national uh, building code. So this is uh, what all has happened in India. But to summarize, what all has happened in non-tangible manner is there is a change in practice that has been seen. One is there is a good sense about importance of immunity and avoiding dryness, over dryness in indoor environment that, that has come. System designs have started changing. I won't say that there is a significant change that has already come, but yes, good designers, they have started embedding the humidification part also, which was forgotten. Exhaust air treatment, there is again healthcare facilities, they have started now having exhaust air treatment as a regular feature in their design. Awareness and extent of filtration across the buildings there, that has increased. And it is already there, many buildings have upgraded their filtration and upgraded their system for heavier filtration. Separate healthcare guide has also been uh, prepared by Ishray, which is already in public domain. IAQ monitoring also has increased quite significantly in India. People are aware, they are, uh, of course, uh, taking CO2 as a surrogate uh, measurement about the quality of me uh, ventilation, but that is fine because cost also has to be seen. But yes, uh, from no monitoring to some monitoring, we have already reached. Hopefully in next few years, we will be having better monitoring. And epidemic ready designs that have also started coming in uh, practice means flexible designs where you can adapt to the changing conditions. So all these changes are the positive changes in the designs of HVC that have started coming. So that's all uh, from my side from India. Uh, before I end, I must acknowledge uh, Mr. Vishal Kapoor and Mr. Ashish Rakeja who gave me some inputs for keeping in this presentation. Thank you very much.